two of waiting for Godot, Vladimir arrives and examines the tree, mm. which now has four or five leaves on it, as well as Estragon's abandoned boots. While he waits for Estragon, he sings a song about dogs building a tomb for a dog that was beaten to death by a cook. Estragon soon arrives, angry at Vladimir for letting him go. He's been beaten yet again, he claims, and for seeming to be happy without him. They again wonder if they should part, but Vladimir says Estragon needs him. He would have stopped the beating by stopping Estragon from doing whatever it is that caused it. The men declare themselves happy, even if it's not true. But what should they do now? Wait for Godot. Vladimir reminds Estragon of Pazzo and Lucky, whom Estragon barely remembers, and of a time they supposedly picked grapes in the Macon area of France, which Estragon denies flat out. Perhaps they should part. Estragon <laughs> suggests Vladimir just kill him, like the other. They talk so they don't hear all the dead voices, but the pair quickly runs out of things to say. They continue to wait, passing the time by making nonsensical statements, <laughs> contradicting each other, asking questions, mm -hmm. and debating whether it's terrible to have thought, concluding they could have done without it. Vladimir finally remembers his earlier observation about the tree. It now has leaves. Vladimir believes it was bare when they were here yesterday, but Estragon maintains mm. that yesterday they were in another compartment. There's no lack of void. Vladimir has to point out the festering wound on Estragon's shin from Lucky kicking him and Estragon's boots as proof that Pazzo and Lucky were there the day before. But Estragon finds the boots are a different color and that they no longer <gasps> pinch his feet. Vladimir suggests that someone took Estragon's boots and left his own boots there. Then Estragon takes a nap, but is awoken quickly by a nightmare, which Vladimir refuses to hear about. Bored, Estragon wants to go, but Vladimir snaps at him that they are waiting for Godot. Estragon decides to leave anyway, but he is distracted when Vladimir finds Lucky's hat. Following a comical circular exchange of the three hats between the two of them, Vladimir ends up wearing Lucky's hat while Estragon wears his own. Vladimir pretends to be Lucky, which drives Estragon to finally leave, but he returns immediately, afraid they're coming from all directions. Vladimir is excited it might be Godot, but doesn't see anyone. Lucky and Pazzo arrive again. This time, Lucky wears a different hat, and Pazzo is now blind, following Lucky on a rope that's much shorter than before. Seeing Vladimir and Estragon, Lucky stops, and Pazzo plows into him, causing them both to fall down. As Pazzo pleads for help getting up, Estragon suggests they first demand more chicken bones. Pazzo cries for help to all mankind, and notes that all mankind is us, whether we like it or not. Vladimir suggests they help Pazzo in hopes of a reward, and then delivers a monologue that argues for helping on the basis of shared humanity. But he gets sidetracked, praising himself and Estragon for knowing their purpose, to wait for Godot. Still, he suggests this habit just might be a habit to keep their sanity. Either way, they must not waste the distraction. Seeming not to hear Pazzo's large offers of money, they proceed to try to help Pazzo. But in doing so, Ugh. Vladimir falls and is also unable to get up. Estragon tries to help Vladimir, but he also falls and gets stuck on the ground. When Pazzo's pleas disturb Estragon, Vladimir beats Pazzo. Pazzo crawls away and they call to him, but can't reach him. After contemplating a cloud floating by, Vladimir and Estragon easily stand up, then lift up and support Pazzo, who doesn't recognize them because of his blindness, and also doesn't remember their previous interactions. And he can't determine when he went blind, explaining that the blind have no concept of time. When they request that Lucky sing or think for them, Pazzo reveals that Lucky is dumb, or unable to speak. Estragon gets his revenge on Lucky, kicking him until he hurts his own foot, before he retreats to take a nap. Pazzo recovers himself enough to order Lucky to rise and carry his burdens, which include a bag of sand. Pazzo and Lucky continue on their journey, apparently falling again just after they make their exit. Once Pazzo and Lucky are gone, Vladimir wakes huh? Estragon from his nap. Vladimir thinks Pazzo might not actually have been blind. Estragon wonders if perhaps he was actually Godot. Meanwhile, unable to remove his boots, Estragon falls asleep again. Just like before, a boy arrives. He doesn't recognize Vladimir and says he didn't come yesterday. Again, using leading questions, Vladimir prompts the boy to deliver the same message as the previous night. Mr. Godot cannot come tonight, but will tomorrow without fail. When questioned, the boy thinks Godot does nothing and has a white beard. He says his brother, who may or may not have come before, is sick. 
Vladimir again demands the boy confirm for Godot that he's seen them, but the boy flees without replying. The sun sets, the moon rises, and Estragon wakes up. Learning that once again, Godot didn't show up, he suggests going far away and giving up on him. But Vladimir replies, he'd punish us. They again consider hanging themselves from the tree, but the cord Estragon uses as a belt breaks when they test it. And without a belt, Estragon's pants fall down. Estragon suggests again that he and Vladimir part ways, but Vladimir declares they will return tomorrow with a rope to hang themselves, unless Godot comes to save them. Estragon pulls on his trousers, and the men agree to go, but they do not move.